In this video, I'll cover setting up Synology Calendar, which is a time management and scheduling calendar that you can host on your Synology NAS. I'll also go over integrating Synology Calendar with various client applications, specifically Apple Calendar on macOS, Thunderbird, and Microsoft Outlook on Windows. As a brief introduction, Synology Calendar provides a web interface that offers a full feature of options to manage daily events and tasks with different views to fit individual workflows, along with event notifications and a to-do list as well. Synology Calendar also provides the ability to share calendars, which is great for teams or families that would like to have a single calendar to refer to so everyone can be on the same page. Synology Calendar also supports the CalDAV standard and is compatible with client applications like Apple Calendar on iOS and macOS, Thunderbird, and Android. Also, with a free plugin, Microsoft Outlook users on Windows can integrate with Synology Calendar as well. Let's get started by first installing Synology Calendar from the Package Center. I'll search for Calendar and click Install once I see the package. Synology Calendar requires a few additional packages and services to be installed, so I'll click on Yes here. Note that for me, the installation of Synology Calendar and the additional packages took a little over 5 minutes, so I'm fast forwarding through the installation process in this video. Next, for external access to Synology Calendar, I'll set up DDNS and port forwarding. I'll do this by bringing up Control Panel, then External Access. Here I'll select DDNS, click Add, and for a service provider, I'll select Synology. I'll enter in a host name I'd like to use, then click on the Test Connection button, which comes back with a status of normal, so everything looks to be set up fine. Now I'll check the box to get a certificate from Let's Encrypt and set it as default, then click OK. I'll click OK once again on this window confirming that the new certificate will be set as default and after the web server restarts, DDNS will be all set. For port forwarding, here are the rules that I've set up on my router. Basically ports 5000 and 5001 need to be forwarded to the internal IP address of my Synology NAS on the corresponding ports. Next, I'd like to enable the login portal for Synology Calendar. I'll do that by bringing up the login portal control panel and first I'll check the box to automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS and click Save. This step is done so whenever we connect to the login portal, HTTPS is always used. After the web server restarts, I'll visit the website once again using the IP address that is assigned to my Synology NAS, so I need to verify this in my browser. I'll then go to Control Panel and Login Portal once again. Here I'll click on Applications, select Synology Calendar, then click Edit. Now I'll enter in Calendar for the alias, then click Save. The last setup step before being able to start using Synology Calendar and set up the client applications is to assign permissions to the users that you want to allow access. To do this, I'll go to User and Group, select the account I'd like to provide access, and click Edit. Here I'll click Applications and enable the Allow box associated with Synology Calendar, then click Save. At this point, we're ready to start using Synology Calendar, and the first way I'd like to access the application is through the web interface. I'll do that by using the DDNS hostname and web portal alias, as you see here. I'll hit enter, and now I'll log in with the user account I enabled with Synology Calendar Access earlier. As you can see, there are various views that you can switch between, and a default calendar named My Calendar is set up as well. I'll add an event to the calendar, noting that this entry was created from the web portal. We'll be tracking this and other entries as we set up the other client applications in the following sections. 
Also note that I won't be going over the other features available in the web portal, but I'll leave a link to Synology's knowledge base that you can refer to in the description below. Next, I'll set up Apple Calendar on macOS, but first I'll get the Synology Calendar CalDev link from the web portal by bringing up the menu for My Calendar and select CalDev account. Here, I'll copy the macOS iOS link, then bring up Apple Calendar. To set up a new calendar, I'll bring up the calendar menu and select Add Account. I'll choose the Other CalDev Account option from this window, then click Continue. From this window, I'll change the account type to Advanced and enter in my username and password. I'll paste in the CalDev link I copied earlier, but I'll need to cut and paste the various sections between server address, server path, and port. Once done, I'll click Sign In, and in a few seconds, we see the web portal event I added earlier, so we know the calendar is syncing properly. I'll add a new event here in Apple Calendar, and if I switch back to the web portal, we can see that the Apple Calendar event shows up as well. Next, I'll be setting up Thunderbird, but before I begin, I'll bring up the CalDev account information from the web portal once again, and this time copy the Thunderbird link. I'll then switch over to Thunderbird and create a new calendar by right-clicking in the Calendar column and select New Calendar. From the Create New Calendar window, I'll select On the Network, then click Next. I'll then enter in my username, paste in the link I copied earlier into the Location section, and click Find Calendars. I'll then enter in my password and click Sign In. Now I see my calendar and I'd like to rename it, so I'll select Properties, make the changes to the calendar name, click OK, then click Subscribe. Now I'll add a new entry, then confirm in both the web portal and in Apple Calendar where I'll refresh the calendars to have it show up. The last calendar application that I'll set up is Microsoft Outlook for Windows. And to start off, I'll make sure that Outlook isn't running because we'll first need to install a free Outlook plugin named Outlook CalDAV Synchronizer, which allows Outlook to synchronize events with a CalDAV server. If you would like to learn more about Outlook CalDAV Synchronizer, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. To make use of the free plugin, we'll first need to download the latest version from the download link. Once downloaded, I'll extract the contents of the zip file and run the setup application to install the plugin. I kept the default options in my setup as I ran through the installation wizard. At this point, I'll start up Outlook, and if the plugin was installed successfully, we'll see it loading as an add-in during the Outlook startup process. Now I'll switch to the calendar view in Outlook, click on the CalDAV Synchronizer menu, then click on Synchronization Profiles. I'll then click on the plus sign to add a new profile and select Generic CalDAV CarDAV from this window and click OK. Here I'll fill in the name section, then for Outlook folder, I'll create a new folder under Calendar and give it an appropriate name, then click OK, and OK once again on this window. I'll bring up the Outlook CalDev Synchronizer Options window once again and fill in the remaining server settings. Note that the dev URL is exactly what was used for Thunderbird, which I covered earlier. Once done, I'll click on Test or Discover Settings, and if all goes well, I'll get a Connection Test Successful pop-up, where I'll click OK. I'll click OK once again from the Options window, and now the Outlook Calendar should be all set. I'll bring up the calendar that was just created and click on Synchronize Now, which displays the events from the other calendar applications that were entered earlier. I'll also create a new event or appointment, as Outlook calls it, and click on Synchronize Now to sync the event to the CalDev server. Now, if I bring up the web portal, I see the new Outlook event. For Thunderbird, I'll click on Synchronize to have the Outlook event show up. 
and for Apple Calendar, I'll select Refresh Calendars to have it display the new Outlook event as well. Note that Synology covers additional clients that I didn't cover, including Android, which requires a CalDAV client like Microsoft Outlook, and Apple Calendar on iOS in this knowledge base article that I'm referring to here on screen and which I'll link to in the description below. Lastly, if this video was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and support my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.